Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we have ourselves a pretty cheap gaming headset with some pretty great performance. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we have here is the AirJoy Plus, which is a cheap gaming headset from EXA. Now we have actually reviewed one of their gaming headsets in the past and it did a pretty good job. It was wireless, it had good audio quality, good microphone quality, and it had a piece of software to go along with it, which is pretty impressive. So yeah, this time we have their cheaper model at $35. And yes, it also comes with a piece of software, which is pretty great. With the software, you can actually set some presets, equalizer settings, microphone noise cancellation, and enable the virtual 7.1 surround sound, which is pretty cool. So first off, it is lightweight at 204 grams. It does seem like it has a pretty good build quality, as you can see here. I'm trying to bow it really hard and usually you would see these things kind of break and even though these cups actually rotate uh, It's holding up pretty well as you can see here now as for the pads themselves They're not really replaceable, but the actual quality of the ear pads is pretty good. It's pretty comfy We do have a little bit of padding on the bottom here. Nothing really special just a very thin layer and again It's pretty flexible. It doesn't seem like it's gonna rip it's holding up pretty well and we do have a decent amount of depth. Now as for the top hat here, as you can see, it's pretty small, but it does get the job done. And since the headset is very lightweight, you really don't need a whole lot. It does have multiple layers inside here. We do have some cushionings and we have already done the bending test. So this headset should definitely last you a pretty good amount of time. In terms of looks, it looks like a pretty decent headset. If you're looking for something stealthy, this might not be it since it does have kind of a cool looking glowing logo. And as you can see, when expanded all the way out, it should accommodate most people. Now moving on to the microphone, as you can see here, it does have a pretty good range. However, it's not very flexible. It can get in front of your mouth, which is pretty good. It does have a wind muff. However, if you want to get it out of the way, well, you got no options other than kind of leaving it this way. You can either push it out to the side, actually use it, or somewhere in the middle. So it is always going to be dangling right in front of you, which may not be ideal for some people. Moving on further, we can see that it does have a dedicated microphone mute switch right here, as well as a dedicated volume knob, which is pretty useful. And finally, we have the cable here. It is rubberized. It terminates to a USB Type-C cable and the total length is 1.5 meters. And thankfully included in the box, you do get an adapter from Type-C to Type-A, which will extend the total cable length to two meters. And it's got a pretty cool purple tip right here. So yeah, when it comes to build quality, it is a pretty solid headset. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the microphone quality, audio quality, and take a look at the software. All right, so here we are taking a look at the software. We got a couple things going on here. We have three main tabs. The first one on the right is for the microphone noise cancellation, which you can turn it on and off. Then we have the regular sound as well as the 7.1 virtual surround sound. For the regular sound profile slash equalizer, we have six different presets. As for the virtual surround sound, we have four presets. And then in both tabs, we have an additional five presets they can rename and customize which is very handy. And when you are in the music or the regular sound profile, we have a little visualizer here. So when you have a video playing, it will show you what the audio would look like. Now, to be honest, it's not that great. It's not responsive. And at the same time, it doesn't paint a clear picture since the right side is usually just empty. As for the virtual surround sound, it's surprisingly not that bad. In fact, uh, if you have ever used one of those HyperX Cloud 2s with the built-in virtual surround sound, it just does not sound great. It just sounds over-processed and over-digitized. But with this one, it sounds relatively natural. It is definitely a usable experience. So if you want to use it, it's there. If not, you got the regular presets. Now you're probably wondering what it sounds like out of the box without any software. And to best describe that, it's a bit on the boomy end. It, the bass here is kind of boosted, which might be a little bit too much bass for some people. The trebles are actually all right. They're not ear piercing and the mids are just kind of sitting there. Overall, it's a pretty good listening experience. I would probably recommend having it on the classic or the EXA standard profiles, or again, a mix of those by doing a custom preset. The overall sound quality is pretty good. It does get pretty loud and uh, it does sound very natural and not digitized like you usually see with cheap headsets. And finally, let's go ahead and take a look at the microphone. All right, so moving on to the microphone test, here we are talking through it with the ENC off and the ENC stands for environmental noise cancellation. It actually works pretty well here since it has a second microphone on the headset and it actually maps it against the main microphone and isolates your voice that way. If we go and enable it right here, we can see that the audio quality hasn't changed a whole lot, which is pretty impressive. And it's something that you rarely see on cheaper microphones, let alone gaming headsets. Now, personally, when it comes to microphones, I do class them by their noise floor. And with this one, it actually has a pretty decent noise floor. It doesn't have a whole lot of noise, just overwhelming everything. And that's all thanks to it being driven by the USB driver. It's uh, not amazing. It's not terrible. It's just all right. You can understand what I'm saying. It's a bit muffled. But again, it's pretty fantastic for 35 US dollars. If you've seen my PlayStation Pulse 3D headset, as well as the official Microsoft Xbox gaming headset, the microphones on those are abysmal. So in comparison, this is a pretty great microphone. So with that, here's a quick noise for test, and then we're going to do some typing test, and then move on to conclude this video.
All right, so should you get this headset for 35 US dollars? Well, it does have some compromises. The ear pads here could be slightly bigger and uh, maybe slightly deeper as well. But in the overall comfort, I would give it a 3.9 or 4 out of 5. Now, if the microphone is in your face, you can kind of push it down and get it out of your face. It's not detachable, which is quite unfortunate, but that's all right. The software does work. The overall audio quality is pretty decent for the price. And when it comes to build quality, this thing should definitely last you quite a long time. So, yeah, I could definitely recommend it. Links will be in the description down below if you guys are interested. And yeah, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.